Hi there. So, this is Charlie. And this is also Charlie. Obviously, absolutely delighted to do it. And I'm delighted for the guys there because they put up with so much of my rubbish. Like six nights a week. They've done it for two years now. And like, uh, I think stuff like this, nights like tonight now will make it worthwhile. Charlie has a lot of energy. Charlie is kind of just made of energy. But he's a lot more than just a dude who gets excited. We're going to talk about Charlie. So for those of you who didn't know, last week Charlie Crowley announced that he was stepping down as head coach of University Galway Maori Basketball. Now, you know, most of you are kind of going, it's a coach in the Irish League. I'm guessing a lot of you tuning in are kind of going, I don't really follow the league in Ireland, but okay. But Charlie has sort of done extraordinary things in the Irish Super League, which makes him very, very interesting in terms of what he does next. So for context, Mari as a club, they're based in the suburbs of Galway City, sort of Mari or and more is the area. And the club itself is not really one that's associated with winning a lot. At least it wasn't. Like it was typically a team that would sort of, you know, be battling to avoid relegation in the Super League down to the National League and vice versa. Like would do well to get in some talent, but never expect them to really be competing for trophies. That was until Charlie came along. And in three seasons as head coach, he turned them from being into uh, this team that happened to be there into being a force in the Irish Super League. And like you look at it, his first season sort of you know established them a bit like and all that, got them okay. Second season, first ever time in the cup semi-finals, never had even gotten that far before. Even never had gotten even one step away from the national cup final. His third season, the season just over. They top the Southern Conference outright. They win the National Cup. And they come second overall in the Super League, losing the championship game. I mean, that's just good in general as a turnaround for a club. That's like one that kind of going, it's there to suddenly being, they're here. And then you realize he's only 25. Jumping in, because if you haven't already, we do need to get the subscribers up. Please do subscribe. And yeah. Get on, get, get on that, please. Thank you. That's another level entirely, folks. So this is a dude who's really young. Like, he had to stop playing when he was 22 because the injuries are too heavy and all that. And he has turned a team in what is an amateur league, essentially. Like, yes, players are paid, but, like, it's not full-time. So part-time league, I suppose you'd call it. But, like, in terms of the approach, it's very hard to be pro-pro, as in you can't train every day. You can't operate like a professional outfit where basketball is the only thing for these players. But he's, so, you know, geography and availability of human resources in terms of your proximity is kind of a big deal. And they were already splitting the best players in Galway with Mike Cullen, who were uh, in the Super League longer, more established, have generally gone further. They've been to semifinals before, for example. And Mary were always sort of the little brother in that relationship. And, yeah, he's, uh, you know, done that. Like, in the fourth city of Ireland in terms of the population, he's managed and. You know, Limerick and Galway are not too far apart from each other, but it's a big gap after you go Dublin, Belfast, Cork. Like, that's really big deal. And then we get a little bit crazier, because, of course, Charlie was not full-time. Like, don't get me wrong, he had a professional outlook, but the bottom line is, he had has still very much a day job in logistics types of work. He has a very math-heavy, nerdy job, and he's got to do that, and he has to do it well while trying to, well, while he succeeded in turning a club that was an afterthought into a force in Irish hoops. And that's quite an extraordinary story. So let's see how much more extraordinary it can really get. He's 25. He's had three seasons as a head coach. He's been learning on the job. The potential is extraordinary because a classic issue for a lot of coaches in sort of outlier markets like Ireland or, you know, in Europe looking to go to the US is, well, how do we move them from being big in this small pond into being big in another pond, a bigger pond, so to speak, or any other pond? Often that problem is as well, though, that those coaches obviously have jobs, responsibilities, kids, families, all that stuff, and moving for what is relatively low money is going to be an issue. 
Charlie's got youth on his side in multiple levels. Obviously, he has family commitments back in Goy and a job in Goy, but he's at an age where if somebody's smart enough, he could make a year, two years, go over somewhere as an assistant or, you know, potentially move up to a head coach and see where things go. We've already seen it with uh, the football coach from Belgium who erroneously has been tied to learning from football manager. He liked football manager. Football manager is not how he became a coach. Uh, Will still, like, you know, but, like, you see what Will still did. And again, it was that time of life where it kind of made sense. Like, still, like Charlie, is a lot younger, and especially at the start of his career, than most of the guys playing with him. Uh, well, but still now, he's older than most of them, but he's younger than some of them. But Charlie, again, younger than most of the guys playing playing for him. And still found a way to make it work, and that's what Charlie's done. And it puts together an extraordinary roster in Mari, like the type we wouldn't expect a Mari to put together. So he's shown he can attract players, he can find ways to, you know, find the right guy to fit into a formation that'll work, in a sense. And he's just got the brain, and you've seen from the earlier bits, he has the energy to be a good coach. And then we get to the even more intriguing part. Charlie Crowley is Irish, but he's also American. Has a US passport because he was born there, which opens up the possibility tremendously. Like, if I'm a mid major or low major coach in the US and I'm looking to bring in an assistant who's got a great understanding of basketball, has energy, and is young and willing to learn, like, why wouldn't you take this gamble seriously? Like, reach out to him. You know, that's what I'd be doing right now. I'd be kind of going, listen, at least have the conversation. Like, you know, it's like saying, can we do something with this guy? Can we find a way to do it? Because I'm looking at sort of a coach in Ireland with potential to grow. Like, there are better coaches in Ireland, substantially. All of them have ties which kind of limit their ability to leave Ireland or to move on to a full-time role other than that's within basketball, and that's fine. Crowley has got an opening here. That makes me very, very excited. But in order for that excitement to mean something, it has to go somewhere. Like, he could always go back to Mari, go back coaching again. The door is going to be open for him for the next 40 years, folks, to do stuff with Mari. He's got a long life ahead of him uh, in, in basketball. But 25, and wow, like, that's it's just, you know, you look at the potential there, and you look at the energy, and you think this guy's still learning what it is to coach. And he's been able to develop a team this much at this level. Like, let's bring him up a level. Let's go somewhere, you know, where we can go. Listen, Charlie, we can not exactly kind of be fortune wages, but at 25, and a crafty brain has said, I'm sure people can find a way. We can find a way to make it worth your while to come to whatever city this is in Europe. You know, it could be low tiers, could even be high tiers in some leagues. You know, bring him on as an assistant to see where you can go. Develop him as a coach, like, you know, and get him through his badges and all that along the FIBA levels. Uh, and yeah, there's that, but also there is the American college route, which is a natural one when I look at, you know, this is a guy to bring in, you know, as one of my coaches, what can he do with players, but also he's shown he can recruit in a not exactly dissimilar approach to college, which is you got to find guys where you wouldn't normally find them to come somewhere they wouldn't normally go. Sound a bit familiar mid-majors? It does, doesn't it? It sounds extremely familiar. That's a guy I want to call. That's a guy who, you know, I'm giving a shout to. So Charlie's got real, real potential here. I am extraordinarily happy for him that he's taking a break now because it is all-consuming. Like, when you've got a full-time job and you're basically putting all your other hours into this, like, it's going to take it out of you. It's going to drain you. But the beauty of this is, like, I'd say come the end of the summer, he'll have the energy back, to be honest. I'm not saying he'll want to go straight back into coaching. He might, though, knowing Charlie, he's a bit mad. And he also appreciates what he sees from other teams around him because I'm going to close off on this. The team that beat... Um, his team, Mary, in the national championship game in the Super League final was Balancholic. That was at the 1st of April. I know, very funny. But in January, after he had just, one of those clips you just saw, after he had just won the semi-final to get to the final, he was waiting to find out if it was going to be Aina or Balancholic. And he was like being very respectful to both teams. But what he said about Balancholic was very interesting to me because, like, you know, some people don't enjoy watching Balancholic. You know, I don't know. I think they play the best basketball in Ireland to watch. They play very sexy basketball, his exact words, that last part for sure. And I'm kind of going, wow, this guy is a fellow who's observing everything. Like, he's making sure he knows what's going on across the board. And that, to me, just really jumped out as a dude who wants to observe what's happening with other teams, how they operate, and learn from them, uh, while also appreciating them. So, you know, he's got, he's got, he, he, he has to mask the respect, you know. 
uh, that he gives out, he's earned the respect from people who watch it. He's turned, you know, what was, well, Moribund's too harsh, but certainly a so-so program in Mari into being one that gets seriously pumped up crowds going wild for this team. Um, and I just think he can do it at another level. And I'm saying to y'all, if you're watching, if you know a coach somewhere in Europe or the US, because again, has the passport, has the citizenship, get them to give this guy a call, get them to reach out. What's the worst you can do? The least, the, the, the absolute worst, oh no, you'll have a very fun conversation with a guy who's got a whole lot of energy. And yeah, Charlie Crow is 25. Wow, do I feel old. Oh, guess who forgot to record an outro. Hey there, we've got more videos coming up for you later this week. Broad variety of subjects coming up. And please subscribe. We need to get those numbers up. We're aiming for a thousand. And let us know also what you want us to talk about in our videos. Comments are below. We love the interaction. Please hit me up.